Now, I am certainly not here to say that competition ultimately is a bad thing. Competition can be a good thing. Competition can be a great thing. Competition can bring out the best or sometimes worst of all parties involved in that battle, in that game, in that back and forth. I think it's very important in life that you look for rivals. And rivals not in the sense that you hate them, but rivals in the sense of you look at them and you say, I want to take elements from them. I want to be like them. Not just a mentor, mentee type of thing, but like a rival say, that's who in some cases I'm going to base myself against. That's somebody that I look at and I say, I want to do that like them, or I want to do that better than them. Doesn't mean you want to be obsessed or consumed by it, but it's kind of the old thing of, um, if you're the smartest person in the room too often, you're in the wrong room. You, you have to be willing to look outward and say, okay, what are others doing? How could I incorporate some of their stuff? How could I push myself to do better? What can I learn from them? What do they do better? How are, do we have situations where their strengths are my weaknesses? You know, that kind of thing. That's naturally good. That's good for business. That is good for individual growth, development, improvement, helping us to achieve our full potential. So competition can be very good, helpful. Certainly can with professional wrestling too. The more major wrestling companies we have, the more valid, legit options we have. If one company does something you don't like, you legitimately have a second option. That's great. Or if you really like both products, you can watch both companies and have a greater overall wrestling experience. The talent in the business are better off for it because they're not all beholden to the Titan Tower monopoly. They have other options. They have other places they could go and still apply their trade and make an honest, decent living at doing professional wrestling. That absolutely is a great thing. So as you get ready to listen to the rest of what I'm going to have to say, just bear in mind, competition is not all bad. However, I think this is especially important when it comes to professional wrestling. Those who don't learn from history are doomed to repeat it. And this stupid little petty tit for tat you're starting to see more and more from Tony Khan and AEW and then Vince and WWE, like, yeah. Those who don't learn from history are doomed to repeat it. I know there are many of you that think this is great, that think this is awesome, that want to sit there and excuse this or defend this or justify this from one side or the other, or both sides. The reality is you shouldn't because you're not paying fucking attention and you certainly have not learned from wrestling history. This is not meant to be some type of Vince McMahon puff piece, so let's get that clear. But I do think it is important to establish the context with which I'm referring to. When you look at the WWE and you look at Vince McMahon, the NWA was trying to compete with them. They lost. Jim Crockett Promotions got out of their lane, stopped focusing on doing their own business, tried to compete with Vince. They lost. Inevitably, all of the territories of the 80s and 90s, in some cases, you know, they didn't have a choice because Vince was going to kill them, and he did kill them. So it's a, maybe a slightly different scenario, but some of them started to get outside of their own lane and started to try and go up head to head against Vince McMahon, Verengani and the AWA and aligning with the Jairus and other people and that, you know, world-class championship wrestling and all of that. And none of that worked and they're all gone. WCW, you know, there was a period of time they were topping the WWF in the ratings during that Monday Night Wars period, but eventually... They took their eye off the ball. They got too obsessed with the competition and not obsessed nearly enough with what they were doing, who they were, what they represented, what they wanted to be about, and where they were going in the future. That's a major reason why WCW has been gone dead RIP for over 20 years now. You look at TNA, whereas TNA was the AEW before AEW, different company. I, I appreciate and understand that. But the reality is, is that AEW wishes they had the television ratings that TNA did in its peak. TNA certainly wishes they had the pay-per-view buys that AEW has now back then. But when you look at TNA, 
Like they were incredibly obsessed with WWE. They were trying to compete against WWE. That's what led to them bringing in Bischoff and Hogan at one point in time, trying to take Impact Wrestling show on Thursdays and moving it to Monday nights to run head to head against Raw. Like, how did that go? You're going to say, well, the company still technically exists. Does it really, though? Does it really? It doesn't even have the same name. It doesn't even have like a major cable network television deal. It just doesn't matter in the grand scheme of things. Those who don't learn from history are doomed to repeat it. And I think too often what happens is you go from that thing of that natural human instinct to want to compete and want to be the best to looking at worthy rivals and saying, okay, I've got a worthy rival here. How can I use that to make the best version of myself to where it becomes too much about, I'm going to take my eye off the ball and not be worried about the long-term or infinite game and focus on that finite game as Simon Sinek would talk about and focus on the here and now. We've got to beat them. We're obsessed with them. We're obsessed with them. We're obsessed with them. And then you miss the whole plot. And then everything goes to shit. If you're not careful, that's what's going to happen here. As far as WWE goes, let's start with them. Now you could talk about SmackDown this week. They went and extended it by half hour and they're running that 10 to 10.30 Eastern block commercial free. Now, to be fair to them, that could be a request from FS1. They're getting that better rating that is going to come from SmackDown relative to what would usually air in that time slot on that network. But also knowing that this is going to be a significantly lower watch SmackDown on FS1, which it always is whenever it ends up on FS1. That's just the reality of the situation. So they're trying to maximize the rating that they can get. Certainly maybe a network request. That could also be Vince being petty and say, you know what, if we're going to go here, here's the trade-off. And I want an extra half hour. I want a commercial free. And I want to fuck up Rampage. Certainly all possible. Certainly all possible. And that's stupid. That's focusing more on what others are doing instead of worrying about your own house. And trust and believe there are plenty of things that WWE needs to do to focus on and worry on their own house. Frankly, you know, when Triple H called AEW a pissant company, it was a stupid thing to say, but it wasn't entirely untrue in the scope and the context of the time and where WWE is as an entity in relation to AEW. And they should view it in some ways as a bit of a pissant company, only in the sense of to not be disrespectful, but to say, hey, you know what? We're the ones with the Peacock deal. We're the ones with the network television deal with Fox. We've got the massive television deal with USA Network. That's the shit we should be focusing on. We should be focusing on getting more fans to come to our live events, selling more merchandise. Because whatever AEW does or doesn't do doesn't matter in the long-term plans of what WWE should be about as an operation. That's what they've been focusing on. And when you see them try to play that Vince McMahon petty game of if you remember when you knew AEW Dynamite was going to be on TNT on Wednesday nights, here comes WWE magically bringing NXT onto USA Network, putting it in the same two-hour time slot and bringing it online a few weeks early before Dynamite starts, trying to undercut them. How did that work out for them? Sure, you might say it undercut AEW's, Wednesday show, it did, but it did more damage to their own fucking brand in NXT because they lost the plot. They got away from what the whole point was. Triple H tried to compete a goddamn high production value indie fed to go up against another high production value indie fed. And WWE doesn't know that style. That's not them. And the purpose of NXT is to produce that next generation of talent. You should be using that as your feeder system to the main roster instead of treating it like it's, it's a third major brand. Because it was never going to be a third major brand, WWE lost the plot because they got too focused on doing stupid shit when it comes to AEW. You see how this competition thing doesn't always go well? WWE should be looking at the long-term play. Like, what are we doing now that will help us for five years from now, ten years from now? You know, when you talk about the different roster releases they do and so forth, and people say that's cost-cutting moves. Uh, that's a reflection of a not-so-well-run company. Because if you've always got to cut people uh, to make your bottom line, that's a sign of trouble. Now, 
Granted, that's just them being greedy to make even more profit because they're not in trouble. But it is also a reflection of they are not playing that long-term game. They are in the moment, in the here and now. It's a reflection of Vince and his leadership, or in certain cases, a lack of leadership. But then we come to AEW. And you've got Tony Khan sitting there going on Twitter talking about, you know, I see what you're doing, and nah, 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 you're coming against us, and it means, shut the fuck up, Tony. Worry about your own lane. Worry about your own shit. You are, beyond a shadow of a doubt, the greatest chance we have to have a real, big-time, second, mainstream North American wrestling company. TNA was never going to be at this level that AEW has a chance to be at. There is still a chance to be that. But if you continue down this path, you are going to eventually, oh yes, it's true, end up just like fucking TNA did. Do you want that? Focus on your own shit. You sitting there worried about goddamn Vince and WWE and what the hell they're doing. How about asking yourself the question of, hey, we spent big money to bring in people like CM Punk and Brian Danielson and Adam Cole. And over the past month or two, the only thing that's increased significantly is our goddamn payroll. Your ratings have not went up. If I'm not mistaken, Rampage just had its lowest viewership yet. Your dynamite viewership is back to levels that you had before you brought in the punks and the Danielsons and the Coles of the world. Focus on your own shit. Don't make goddamn excuses about, oh, it's the baseball players. Really? That's the fucking excuse you're going to use? Where Major League Baseball, the average age of the fan watching is the Fox News uh, WWE age demographic of 55 plus? Are you fucking serious here? Give me a break. Focus on your own shit. Focus on the fact that you made this big deal about bringing in a CM Punk. Got him in. Great move. Great coup for AEW. And you didn't have a fucking plan of what to do with him. Who does that? And you're going to say they do. No, they fucking don't. And you can clearly tell they don't. Because if you're sitting there and thinking to yourself, I have a chance to bring in CM Punk. And you had the money to bring in CM Punk. And you fucking did it. Would you be doing what they're doing with CM Punk? Hell no, you fucking wouldn't. Sitting there worried about WWE. It's like one of those situations where you have two parties, like there's a breakup, and one of them is obsessed about the other person, and that other person's living rent-free in their mind. Meanwhile, this other person's fucking some other guy or gal. They ain't giving you a second thought. They don't give two fucking shits. They may in some ways, but in general, they don't. Now that's how you have to act here. It amazes me how many wrestling fans want to sit there and say that Tony Khan is, Khan is some wrestling savant or some type of genius. How many of you could do just as good of a job, if not better, than Tony Khan if you were in the same situation that he was in? He was brought up in wealth. He inherited his opportunities, his fortune. And you're going to say, well, he worked. Okay, stop fucking being naive about it. Stop sitting there giving him reach arounds and doing this to him. He ain't doing anything for you. I guarantee you, a lot of you, given the same opportunities, the same advantages in life, the same nepotism, and the doors opening that Tony Khan had, you would do just as well, if not better. Because if we really want to go there about Tony Khan, this purported wrestling genius that you want to talk about, this is the same jackass that was a part of the Jacksonville Jaguars organization and still is, with a very heavy lean towards analytics and how that fucking worked out for him. The same Tony Khan that his work, along with general manager David Caldwell at the time, where I was saying that Blake Bortles was a fucking bust waiting to happen in the third round pick, they took him third overall in the 2014 draft. And this is the guy that you think is a fucking wrestling genius? Are you insane? No, instead of taking all the pot shots at WWE and be like, oh, WCW used to do that. And where the fuck are they now? TNA used to do that. Exactly, where the fuck are they now? Those that don't learn from history are doomed to repeat it. Doomed to repeat it. It's creating a lot of buzz for who? Buzz among the people that are already fucking watching? Helping to create, nurture, and foster an even more toxic environment of wrestling? Why the fuck is that a good thing? You know what should make you happier and more excited about professional wrestling? Consistently better product. If you had to put the window dressing of all this buzz on it, maybe this shit's not so good. 
So for WWE, AEW, it is one of these things. Stay in your own fucking lane. Focus on your own shit. You both would be better off for doing that.